Today I'd like to look at one of the more, um, let's say, manual tasks that we do on a regular basis, which is accumulative updates. So let's first of all look at how the Microsoft website works. If I go to download the latest accumulative updates, um, what you're going to see from their update sheet is that no matter which update I select for whatever is the latest one, it's always going to go to a uh, get the latest updates link. So you can see here you have a, the, it's a, the latest updates or you have a specific version which will take you to an exact URL. So we're going to try the get the latest. Now the reason we're going to use the get the latest is because what you'll find is if I just cancel the download here, at the top what you're going to have is a confirmation page and this on this confirmation page is a catalog number and that catalog number never changes. So doesn't matter what new cumulative update comes out for that particular product, it will always be on that page. So that's step one. So we can go ahead and just do an invoke web request and we get the content of the page back, but we're specifically interested in things like links. So we can see, okay, there are some links on this page. Which one would we like to look at? So I'm gonna go ahead and say, you know what? Give me the links. This will, you know, give me a, a variable list of links. Um, then we're going to say, okay, well, we're interested in the download link. So if I just look and inspect the manually, the download link, we can see that there's some section here that says Microsoft downloads. So how about we just filter all of the links and find ones that contain Microsoft download. So we'll do our invoke web request again, and we'll just apply a where clause to it and do a match on content and see if we can't find uh, URLs that contain the, the Microsoft download. I mean, that would be probably the easiest one, right? So we'll just do a where match and we'll just take, okay, Microsoft download. We don't want the, the full length here because that would be too exact and we wouldn't be able to reuse it or for other catalogs. So if we just do a quick check and we say, okay, well, there's actually three returned in the end. So we can take that as perhaps our one of our three. We Now this is an important thing, because if you're on a catalog that has multiple downloads, like where you've got Power BI Server and you've got a client as well as a server, you need to be able to say which one you want. So in this case, uh, we, we get lucky, it's the first one. So that, that's pretty straightforward. So I can just take the output here, and by the way, since recording this, I realized that the href is a better use than this, but we'll use this one for the moment anyway. So what we now have is a, a nice URL output, but it's in hypertext. So we can say, okay, well, we want to convert this, right? So we want to select from this. And we're going to take again, first object. So now we have just the one. So we, that was our first bit of filtering. So let's go and capture that. So we're going to call that our cumulative update. So QU equals. So now we have that filtered output. So now if we look at this, we have QU and we have here a, a ref. So, okay, now we maybe want to split this down. So there's a couple of things we want from it. We want to get the URL for the download and then we want to get the file name itself. So first one we're going to do is we're going to take a download link. So download is going to equal our original captured QU, but we're going to do some filtering on it. So what we're going to decide to do is we're going to split and then we're going to split based on, and we're going to say, uh, in this case, double quotes. So we can see that the, the start of the URL starts with double quotes. And we're going to say, you know, give us object one. So not the first first object, but the second object in that array. And I'm going to say also trim it so there's no white space. And if we now look at our downloads URL, we should be able to say, okay, what does our downloads URL look like? And we see, oh, we have a nice HTTP path. So that was actually pretty easy to get that converted back into a, a usable path. And 
then we can do another one, which is we can say, okay, well, we also want downloads and we can use downloads for something else. We can say, okay, well, within downloads is our file. So we're going to get the file information. And again, we're going to do a little bit of filtering. We're going to split. And now we're going to split based on the slash. So we can then say, okay, and get me, and we're going to do the, the reverse here. Instead of saying get the first item, we're going to say select the last item. So we're going to select object dash last one. So that means that we will then get the last part of this. So in this case, this will be the SQL file itself. So if we look at the content here, we now have a file name. So we've been able to take from that website uh, a download URL and a file so we know what the name of the file is. So this is fundamentally we're 90% there. So what we need to do now is just take that last part and say, okay, I've got file X and I'm going to download from Y. So how do we now take these values and turn them into something useful? Well, there's plenty of different ways to do it. Uh, and personally for me, the easiest one is to say, you know what, let's, let's look at bits. So we can use the uh, start bits transfer and we can say, okay, we've got a source which is our URL, so that's easy. So source is download and destination, then whatever our destination path is, so that's entirely down to you. Um, and then we can throw at the end of that our file. So we can say, okay, our file path plus, or in this case, slash something. Um, so we're going to download here to temp. I'm going to say file and we're going to say, uh, well, we actually that's all we need so we'll, we'll go ahead and just start the download now first of all I've got an error here which is telling me oh look my temp directory doesn't actually exist so that's probably um, going to be a, a good starting point let's create a temp directory so I'm just going to go ahead and create the temp directory and we should be able to run that command again and we see here we go so bits transfer is now doing a download so this is all of the steps done manually which is kind of slow, very repetitive, um, not much of an improvement over going to the website and downloading. But all of this is repeatable because it's the same principle for any of the Microsoft packages. So what if we wanted to do this a little bit differently? So first of all, we'll confirm that our download finished, which is awesome, that, that's actually in place. Um, but let's look at it in a slightly more automated way. So we could say, you know what, we'll take the entire script and we can just then add some additional things in there. So let's do a practical example for a moment. So here we have a script, um, again, not optimized, but hey, it's an example. We've got a download directory. We've got an array with a number of Microsoft product items, in this case, SQL 2016, 17, and 19. Um, we've got a nice little filter the URLs, get our objects, same as we did before, and write some output to the console, or in this case, um, write output, telling us what file we're downloading and whether or not it's present. So in this case, uh, none of the files that we're downloading are present. So we're gonna go ahead and download basically all three accumulative updates. So I'm just gonna go and prove to you that I'm not cheating here, so the directory we are downloading to, uh, first of all, it does exist, and it was empty of these types of file. So when you're doing a bits transfer, one of the things to note here is you do get temporary files, and the temporary file will get converted eventually into a full-blown file. Now, what I like about bits transfer is that it's um, restartable, and it's way faster than something like Invoke Web. So I tend to prefer it for this kind of task. Anyway, uh, first file has downloaded, so we can look at some of the, the information there. So we can go ahead and say, okay, well, we have this file. Uh, it happens to be this product version is for this product, and the file version is X. So if you were downloading this for the purpose of, let's say, creating an updated chocolatey package or an updated SCCM package or whatever, before you start that automated process, you can say, okay, well, first of all, does the file already exist? If it does, no need to download it. We have that check already in place. 
Um, secondly, you want the so file is downloaded, you, you could add a, a compare step. So you'd say, okay, well, is this higher version than what I currently have? So we can go ahead and say, you know what, we were going to grab the file information. So the file information itself is going to consist of something like uh, getting the hash values or getting the version information. So you can get the file information. Uh, this is a good example. You do a, a get child object and then uh, you simply get the, the version info out of that. So you can see here we've got three outputs. We've got the file version, the uh, vendor version or product version in this case, and the, the file physical location. So you can use that to kind of filter through your downloads and determine which one's the latest.